Hey, good morning, Eric G. You know, I, I am a little bit disappointed, like most Ranger fans probably are this morning when you wake up. And I think I speak for all Ranger fans uh, that uh, watching the game yesterday after the first period, we were all uh, pretty happy with the fact that it was 0-0 at the end of the first period. I mean, it could have been 2-3 to three or 4 to nothing uh, on the other end. And Vasilevsky made a couple of good saves, too, so I don't want to take anything away from him. But there was no question that the, the lightning came out, and it's exactly, if you're a hockey fan, this is the type of thing that you would have expected. And then to be 0-0 at the end of the first period, you're like, oh, all right, we got away with one. You know, we, you know, Igor kept us in it. Igor made some great saves, and uh, they missed some shots, and this is the way hockey goes. All right, so let's see what happens in the second period. Uh, they take a lot of stupid penalties. They try to run Igor Shosturkin. Uh, that's going to be an issue now as we move forward as the Lightning are trying to get into his head and trying to get physical with him. Um, we get the two power play goals. We've got a 2 nothing lead. The Nikita Kucherov goal, the first goal uh, of, for Tampa Bay, if you ask Igor Shosturkin, should he have blocked it, 100% he will tell you he should have had that one. That, that to me, was... I want, it's not a soft goal because it's a power play and he's basically on a doorstep and he's taking a shot and he's shoots it between his legs. To me, Igor normally makes that shot. He read the play perfectly. He knew where the puck was coming from and somehow it slid underneath his pads. Uh, that was probably one that he would love to have had back. But, you know, you talked about that great pass that Kucherov made to plot. And then, of course, Chris Kreider at the end of the game says, you know, I'm sitting around puck watching and I need to be more involved. And I, it's not on Mika because Mika was the closest one to Andre Plot for the game winning goal. But Kreider took uh, responsibility for it. And, you know, Jacob Truba had a, a tough game yesterday. You know, he took a lot of penalties. Those penalties came back to haunt the Rangers. You know, five on five, the Rangers played pretty damn good, man. Solid defensively until that last goal. But, you know, they... It's not like they played the perfect road game, but they were getting away with not playing their best game while John Cooper went to back to 12 forwards and 6D. You know, he had been playing with 11 forwards and 7D. And now I know the Rangers coming out of this game, I'm not sure what the uh, the future or immediate future of Ryan Strom is. Yeah, well, that, that's a huge deal, of course. I, I couldn't tell if that was a knee. Back. I couldn't tell if that was a thigh. You know, I couldn't tell if it was a hamstring. I couldn't tell what it was, but it, whatever it was, he tried to come back on the ice and didn't skate. He, he couldn't He couldn't do it. So that usually means that that's going to be some significant downtime. But then then now, now it shifts back to Gerard Gallant. What, what are you going to do, and how is he going to fortify if Brian Strom is out for an extended period of time? Do they bring up like a Dryden Hunt or Julia, uh, Julian Guntier? Do they want to keep the lines, you know, four lines and then 60? I, I don't want to see 70. I don't want to see Patrick Nemeth. I don't want to see any of those guys. I want to see, you know, maybe maybe a, you know an extra forward that you have that has played this year at some point in time. But, you know, this is a series. And they are a champion, and they are the two-time Stanley Cup champion. And Vasilevsky played great yesterday. Barkley Goudreau had a doorstep well, stop uh, shot, and yeah. uh, you know. But then again, well, he ended up getting hurt and then coming back. Yeah, well, he got you he know, took he a shot off it, the ankle. Right, he blocked that yeah. shot. But here's the other thing too that that does always a little bit unnerve me when when I when I think about when the Rangers do lose. What like what is the real reoccurring theme here? And the reoccurring theme is. 51 shots on goal. Yeah, just insane. I mean, right. and, and Igor under siege and really doing an amazing job of keeping it together. I mean, this could have been one of those games where you thought, wow, I mean, the Tampa Bay just went out to a 4 nothing lead and coasted. I mean, that's how many uh, pucks were getting to the net. So, yeah, I mean, that that's frustrating. And you saw in the Pittsburgh series, not that I really want to compare the 70-something shots to what you saw yesterday, but it felt like that affected him. Uh, after that first game, because he wasn't really, I mean, it took him a while to get back to himself. Yeah, I, I, I would just say that I think the more work they get, the more work he gets, the better he is. Now, 50 is ridiculous. And now, and they also blocked, I think, 18 shots in front of him. Yeah. <laughs> so it just goes to show you that they they were under onslaught. It felt like the whole game. And then you're just waiting, say, okay, it's 2-2. Two, two. Maybe maybe Kreider will get one of those lob passes. Maybe they'll get behind the defense. Maybe he'll be able to score. Maybe Mika will do something special. Maybe Panarin will do something special. And it just it just never really materialized. And then unfortunately to give up that goal that late, I thought we were going to get extra hockey yesterday. And then you know those are the situations when you're on the road against a you know Stanley Cup champion, back to back Stanley Cup champion, no, no less. Those are the opportunities you want. You want the game to be tight. You want it to be close. And you just want one of your players to do something special 
kind of like they did at the end of the, at the end of the game with Andre Pilat. So yeah. um, I, I would just say that I'm not I'm not overly uh, concerned about anything other than Ryan Strom. And you know the fact is this team has been resilient all year. Uh, this is a series. This is the heart of a champion. This is not going to be easy. It's going to be excruciating and frustrating at times, but other times it's going to be exhilarating. And I will say Friday night was exhilarating. Yeah, sure. Friday night was great, but I I, I thought if, if I had to think, and I know that they mo- most of these athletes that play in these series, whether it be basketball, football, whatever it is, baseball, you know, the long series, you know, everybody talks about momentum. And when do they when does it swing in your favor? What when doesn't it swing in your favor? And I felt like towards the end of the game on Friday night, with about five minutes left to go, for whatever reason, it looked as if Tampa hit the gas. They hit the gas pedal, and here we go. And, you know, a six-on-five, uh, you know, at the end, and, and Igor's got to make, like, three unbelievable saves. Now, we get a six-on-five at the end yesterday. Don't even get a sniff. Yeah. So, you know, I, I almost felt like if you want to talk about momentum, that maybe the last five minutes of game two – Carried over into Game Three, but then again, but you're right. You were up two nothing in the game. I know, but then, but then again, you, yeah, you are up two nothing. But you got to remember that they're playing in their building. Yeah, and they played, you know, to their crowd. And, and like I said, I thought the Rangers played a, you know, a decent road game, not a great road game. And the reason it's a decent road game is because they were up two nothing at one point, and it's not a great road game simply because of the amount of penalties that the Rangers took and, and Jacob Truba in. In particular, now, look, he's been one of our best players. He sets the tone. Didn't have a great game. You know, that's that's going to happen in a seven-game series. Some would say that maybe Nikita Kucherov didn't have a great game the first two games. Or somebody would say that, you know, Victor Hedman looks slow. I think somebody said that yesterday going into the game. Um, and maybe he didn't play that well. I mean, this is... This is what goes on here. These are these are highly skilled players. They're they're all grinding. They're all uh, playing with purpose. They all want to be the guy, and you're going to get this kind of uh, intensity, which is why we love what we're seeing. It's it's intense. It's uh, it's balls to the wall. Guys coming back after getting hit with the puck in the yeah. legs. So at two nothing, yeah. you're you're thinking, oh man, like this team's got still a lot left in them, Tampa Bay, and they're most likely going to come back. You're 100%, not 100. You're not thinking being up three zero at that point was anywhere, especially when you feel like okay, Tampa took a lot of stupid penalties. You know, Corey Perry, you know, stick across the face of Shisterkin, uh Riley Nash running into Shisterkin. I mean, those are stupid penalties. I mean, absolutely stupid penalties. But then you know, somewhere along the line, there's going to be an, there's going to be an even up call. Yeah, it's going to be a, there's going to be a makeup call, as they say. And I, I can't sit here and say that every single one of the Ranger penalties weren't a penalty. There was one that I would I would question, but um, but you knew there were going to be calls coming for Tampa Bay eventually. I'll tell you where I thought the Rangers were going to win the game. This is after the game was tied. The Kucherov high stick on Zabinijad, the double minor, the four minute power play that it ended up not and being a full four minute power right. play. And the reason for that, because you know they say puck luck, the yeah. puck bounce. You mm-hmm. need the puck bounce here. You need puck bounce there. Troub is at the point. The puck bounces over his stick, and now all of a sudden it's a race with him and I think uh, Kalorn, mm-hmm. and he's got to take a penalty. Yep, and he takes the penalty, and there goes the four minutes. Right, but at that point, I was like, oh, man, I mean, they're going to score in this four minutes, and that's right. going to be it, and then they're going to win the game, and they're going to go up 3-0 in the series. That's what I really thought. But that's why that that that, that penalty by Truba was a killer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because that that was the Rangers. If, if you look at it just from the standpoint of where they were in the game, how much time was left in the game, and where the, where the score was, that was the moment where the Rangers had to capitalize. I, you know, their power play didn't look great yesterday, even though, you know, um, there were times it just looked a little disjointed, but I, I just that penalty right there just basically yeah. kills the Rangers, and that's what. And and again, you know, he's such a good player, and remember, normally it's it's Fox and Panarin up there, mm-hmm. but he's up there now, and he's the he's the the second uh, point guy on the on uh, the second power play, and that puck just jumps over his stick, and kloren has got the uh, you know the momentum going forward, and he's got to stop him. Because they don't want to give up another shorthanded goal because that's been a little bit of a reoccurring theme here throughout the playoffs. Um, and he takes a penalty. And then that just kind of now reignites the fans, you know, in the building. Sure. And they kill it off. And you gain momentum off of killing off of, uh, you know, 
penalties like that. Let me tell you this. Speaking of the fans, once again, a almost a full Ranger fan takeover in that building. I mean, you could you could hear the Potvin sucks chant. You could hear uh, Ranger fans loud when the goals were being scored through the television. I mean, you know this is going to happen in places like Carolina and Tampa, but still, I mean, it is it, it it's significant uh, what what goes on. Um, in these buildings, and I well, do think that it matters. I do think that it, it it does it does count. It does matter. I do think the players notice. Right, it, they do notice. And and the big thing now moving forward for the Rangers, okay, what's going on with Ryan Strom? And the reason I say that is because you know he has been so valuable uh, playing with Panarin five on five, but he's also been a huge contributor on the number one power play. And they have to figure out, you know, if if Ryan Strom is Unable to play, is it Philip Hedo that goes in there? Is it Capo Caco who goes in there? I don't necessarily know that it's Lafaniere that goes in there. You know, is it Andrew Kopp that goes in there? You know, which you know, what what is the makeup of the team now and what does it look like? Um, you know, you have and you're not have, feeling too great about this injury, the fact that he didn't return. Yeah, it's you know, it's kind of like I, I don't know what the injury is, but it is kind of like Braden Point. You know, they're missing their one of their best players. Yeah, a guy who scored the most goals in the right. postseason for them last year when they won the Cup. And he's a big-time player, just like, you know, it seems like Ryan Strom was having a really good playoff run, and he is a significant part of the team. And again, like I said, I don't know. At the, at, I wake up this morning. I, I don't know whether he's going to play tomorrow night. I I hope he can, but I also want him out there at 100%. I don't want him out there at 75% mm-hmm. uh, for – for a lot of reasons, and defensively is, is probably one one of the biggest reasons why, because you got to be a 200-foot player in the playoffs. If you're not, your team's going home. Yeah, absolutely, and I felt like the lightning at one point yesterday were going. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I know what you say about and and the Tampa Bay Lightning and winning two cups and how they're not going to go down 3-0 and you feel like this team's not going to get swept, but there were still a couple times yesterday that I said this this Ranger team is just unbelievable. Like they're going to dispatch of this Tampa Bay team. Too many and they, penalties, and they still may. I mean, they they still very well, well they, may. They, they, they might they, win the series in five. I mean, honestly, they've been the better team for yeah. what? No, they have. I been. mean, they Igor, played Igor, better. Igor has been amazing. Like Igor was amazing yesterday. I know Again. they fa- he faced too many shots. 50, and they, fifty, I think it's fifty two shots now. I'm I'm looking at. Yeah, but I mean, still, is it fair to say that the the Rangers for seventy five percent of the series have been the better team? You know, if you give up not 50, more. So the last five minutes of game two, you give up a goal, and yeah. then you almost give up a game tying goal in the last five minutes. That's not how you shut down the opposing team. And to me, you know that that's where there was a little bit of a shift in momentum. And then, you know, you're talk, you're literally talking about Hall of Fame type players oh, yeah. when you're talking about Stamkos, Hedman, and, and Kucherov, Kucherov yeah. and Vasilevsky. They have four Hall of Fame players yeah. on their roster that are playing. You know, and and Shesterkin even had you know this is the other thing that drives me crazy when you, when you when you, <laughs> Shesterkin had to stop uh, Kucherov when he came out of the box on a breakaway. Yeah, I'm like. But, like somebody has got to like wake you know wake up that can't happen and you know we're all sitting there and I know every Ranger fan at home is sitting there going okay the, 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 the penalty clock's winding down and this guy's going to be coming out of the box don't give him a breakaway and sure enough he gets a breakaway yeah that's right. like what so that that again it's a missed it's just it's just a, a thing where in the midst of everything and I think that that got behind Keandre Miller I think was the one that didn't realize what was happening. Sometimes young players go through that. I mean, he's been great. They've all been great. The whole team has been great. I mean, they've had moments where they've looked bad and they've they've got overrun, and I think that happened at the end of game two, and I think that happened for the most part yesterday until Tampa Bay started taking the the, uh, the penalties. But now they got to regroup. they got to figure out what's going on with Strom, and they got to come out and they got to play a lot. And they'll be the first to tell you they got to play a lot better than they did yesterday. All right, Boomer and Geo just getting started. A brand new week. The Rangers do lose game three, but really had an opportunity to go up 3 0. Didn't happen, of course. We'll get another game tomorrow night, game four down in Tampa. Jerry Recco joins us in just a couple of minutes. He'll tell you about the Mets and the Dodgers, the Yankees and the Tigers, the NBA Finals, and, of course, some post game sound. 